And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today, this is going to be my second part of the Inktober challenge. So Inktober um, is a challenge set up by artist illustrator Jake Parker and it challenges you to do either an ink piece for the 30 days of October, so the piece and then um, put on the internet or if you don't do the full marathon, I'm doing a very gentle stroll, I'm doing ink pieces throughout the month of October, so it's only about four for me. I did the 31 last year and it can be something as simple as a sketch on the back of a napkin with a biro or something that you've got a little bit more time for. It's, it's getting people to have a go and to be inspired and there are prompts for um, word prompts that can help you choose what you want to do or I just choose a subject I'm interested in. What I'm going to do is show you different things. So um, I hope you enjoy that. This time I'm using the Quink Ink. Now Quink Ink has been around a long time and is known as a wonderful fountain pen ink. Now fountain pen ink needs to go through the fountain pen without clogging it up. And this is it's exactly what it is. It hasn't changed. It's a fountain pen ink. But it has some interesting properties. So it's a dye based ink. So will fade um, if exposed to light over time. Um, but it's also a splitting ink. So when you add water, it splits into different colours and I'm going to use that in this drawing. It says it's permanent but the permanent isn't referring to the light fastness in this case, it's referring to its staining properties. So it stains the paper and sits on the paper um, and that's why it's called permanent rather than the washable which means it can be washed out or lifted off or taken out of clothes whereas if you get this on your clothes it stains them. So just a little bit put some on my palette because I want to add the really important ingredient which is water and you'll see very quickly how the ink separates and I've chosen the black the other colours are also water soluble the blue is just water soluble and stays blue the blue black is water soluble and becomes a little bit more turquoise the black becomes golden. So I'm just going to wet an area of the paper and then whack the ink on. This is going to be working in layers and I'm not always that patient letting each layer dry. So we'll see how much, how well it works. I'm also not usually that easy to get subtle soft colors which you need if you're doing distant and backgrounds. I must have some ink on the page just there where I took the lid off, I think. That's not a problem. Okay, nice wet area. I'm going to dilute the ink and then I want to create that really nice soft patch in the middle and the more water you have the more you get that golden glow i'm also got another secret ingredient which i'm going to use at the end but for now i'm just going to put on detail And I'm not overly thinking about where I'm putting areas because it's, like I said, layers. And you build up each layer and each layer will be a little bit more detailed or you can correct the one below. Putting a little bit more ink on. I'm not sure if you can see yet. It continues to develop. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see the gold coming through. 
I'm just allowing the medium to do its own job. Just need to plot out a little bit where I want the path to come through. And I need to let that dry because I want to use the dry brush on that. But for now, just got it in my mind where the path is. Using a watercolour paper, mainly because of the water and the effect I want. I know it will happen on the watercolour paper, but the water, you can see how it's bowing. It would bow even worse on a cartridge paper. So check your papers, test it on different papers, as with any medium, to be honest. Still wet, but I like this fuzzy effect. some branches over. So this will fade, will drop back as it sinks into the paper, but will give me um, some soft effects, which I'm looking for with the trees and the branches. So light coming through here. Oh, this, I like the three trees here. So the three trees here, they're giving me a bit of light. A bit softer. More water, because it's a bit too dark. Like I say, I, I can come back in right at the end and use another medium. Take it back. So it's still quite wet. It's probably a little bit too wet for the more softer lines I'm looking for. But again, I'm not overly worried at the background at the moment. And interesting effects can you know, you, you don't expect them, but actually you end up working with them. Get some of these lovely branches. So still working while it's wet. I will have to dry it. What I don't like is the brush is dropping a big dollop of ink at the end. So I can do it that way. I know it works better that way. So if I start with the... I've not yet managed how to... So if I do it this way, it doesn't drop the ink. It, it drops it at the bottom. But coming this way, I tend to drop a little bit at the end. And I haven't yet mastered fixing that. Again, not worried about it. Try a smaller brush or a different brush. So this was the synthetic sable. What it does is hold plenty of water and that might be um, why I've still got plenty of medium at the end of the brush. So if I use a synthetic, it still does it. Like I say, I'm not overly worried about it. All of this can be corrected and altered but it is worth practicing so you're not surprised or you're not I knew this happened I haven't yet been able to correct it so I wanted to show you some of the effects okay so that's only a background but you can see the golden colours coming through. Just a little bit darker. A 
but I'm not sure what it's going to finish like until it's dried. But look at this great effects happening. And this is great. If the medium does the job for you, I'm happy. I don't need to do any more. Just sit and watch it happen. That's always a bonus. Getting dry now. Get some dry brush. Using the edge of my brush. So I know it's staining, so I shouldn't be able to lift off much colour. What I do know is I tried it before. By dabbing it with the tissue, it seems to take the gold away and leaves you with a, a much softer blue, which again is something you do by trying and making errors because I, I'd put too much detail in an area and I wanted to lift it off. And by lifting off, I actually found that the gold disappeared and the blue came through. So test and try with everything. Still wet, just going to add some more using that wetness. At the end when it's really dry I can then get some lovely detail but I still want some soft lines. Oh yay! See, as it's a bit drier, now I'm able to get that finish. There's a lot of branches up here. So I've got a reference picture. I'm not being slavish to it. It's given me an idea. I'm also, as I'm doing it, judging and planning and seeing what works, what doesn't work, what I can add, what I can take away. So the image is my own. It's not a very good image. I can't really see the detail in it. There are some nice features I would like to pull out. But I'm not going to be, unless it's a subject which really needs detail and to look like the subject then I think you can have just full range and fun with the medium. I just think it's too 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 wet. So I think this is an autumn, I think it would probably be done in autumn, so the leaves are still there, but have that wonderful glow. I'm trying to get layers of colour, so dark, it's still, I'm going to let it dry before I get the final dark, but light colours in the distance. And then again with the leaves. And the different trees. So yes, it dries how I can get a much sharper line. What you do need to do, as with any ink, you need to shake just to make sure that the pigment is mixed in with the binder. I use a fountain pen still like to write with a fountain pen. I think it's just a really nice way of sketching or even writing. And I use the Quink Ink to fill up um, the cartridges and sometimes you've got a pump. It, it's just a nice way of working. And I think it helps with your writing. It changes the way you write. It gives you much more free flowing feel and the same with your sketching. Different pens will give you 
a different you hold them differently you can feel the ink you get a scratchy finish from a biro you get a nice smooth finish from um, a, a fountain pen and all of those just change the way you work Now, I think the prompt today was fragile. Um, we looked it up. Frail. Frail. Yeah, I keep, I've got fragile in mind. Frail. So it didn't really work. But like I say, you can use the prompts. Or, as I've done, I've just chosen my own subject. And using ink. There's no... Rule set rules is pretty free, but it's very encouraging. Have a go. What, what are you going to lose? I had a quote from a uh, nine year old. Well, it's fun to enter proposition, so why not? And, and absolutely true. Why? Why not? What? I mean, yes, you may not make it through, but you may. You don't know what the judges are looking for or what your picture shows and it's not always the best or the most detailed or the um the one that is total realism it may be it may be not what what the judge is looking for but it could be something that just talks to you you know makes you laugh um so you just never know what the judges are looking for so why not just really why not Have a go. You're still trying to just work on this while it's wet. And you can see how wet it's staying. Right. I change hands, it's just something I do. Again, that's a, a skill to learn. It's, it's actually fun. You will find it difficult at first, but what it does is it makes you a little less confident maybe with your opposite hand. Um, I am. I'm predominantly right-handed, but I, I do use my left sometimes. But what it does is it changes how you draw. You take a lot more time looking at your subject and you kind of go, oh and panic a little bit but I've seen much better drawings done with the opposite hand because there's a lot more time thinking about where you make your marks and very confident drawings done with the opposite hand okay I think I'm going to Give that a blast, but you can see the lovely qualities coming through. What I'm trying not to do, previously I've really overworked this area, lost that lovely light. So I think at the moment I'm going to let it dry and then come back and put some detail on. So join us in a minute. Hi, I'm Ali Hargreaves and I'm here to introduce you to Ready Steady Paint. This is a monthly art subscription box for 6 to 11 year olds. Ready Steady Paint has been designed by today's artists to support, develop and encourage those of tomorrow. I have had over 20 years experience as a primary school teacher. I've worked as an artist in residence in a number of primary schools and I'm also a mum. I've seen how creative subjects, especially art, has declined over the years and has been taught less and less in the educational system. We feel very passionate about filling in this artistic void. We're so excited to share the experience with you and your children. We hope to give children a chance to produce beautiful pieces of art with high quality materials. Following a hand curated syllabus, each month subscribed children will receive a box full of high quality artistic goodies in the post. 
Using these materials, they'll be able to follow the online tutorials delivered by me and access through the Ready Steady Paint website. All this will be conveniently delivered to your door at an affordable cost. There is so much to learn and so many wonderful activities to complete and rewards to gain. So what are you waiting for? Join us on this journey of artistic fun and discovery. Hello and welcome back. So I've given that a quick blast. I don't think it's fully dry, but it should be dry enough for what I need. So now I can go back in and even from drying, you can see how the inks drop back. And that means I can put some more dark in the foreground. Actually, I want to do that as well. Should have done that when it was wetter. That would have been fun to get from really. Still a bit damp, like I said. It's just so easy when the medium does the job for you. <laughs> Why not? And then you don't have to do all the details and worry about, you know, other things. All you need to do is look at the balance of the composition and a bit of light and dark. Got a nice branch here. Wiggle. You just can't see all the details from all the trees, so I'm just going to have to make it up a little bit. Hopefully that's now brought another layer back. Being careful not to overwork and lose the detail here. It's a really wooded area so I want to build up a little bit of the wood. But just keep that little, I think we call this the fairy dell. The light, we were walk, going for a walk in the evening, the light was just going down. It was creating these, looked like fire, to be honest. Using the texture of the paper. Right, so bring back these bushes in the foreground. More ink. Lots of little branches or trees. Coming off from here and lots of tiny branches. Lots more coming down here. It gives it kind of a rounded feel.
using the water. need some colour here and I'll show you why. Okay, let's work up a little bit on here. So there's a path. Going around here. You just need a bit of shadow at the background, and a bit darker, yeah. Put some more leaves on, because you'll see at the end why. You need a little bit more. See how easy it is just to use the brush to make those shapes. It's just a dream, to be honest. And it's just a round brush. This is a standard brush which you will have as part of your painting set. And you just don't need to, if you you know, you, you just use it so many ways, really sharp angles, use it on its edge to get um, these shapes, but I can split it and use it for some detail and grasses, just one brush. It's not going to ruin the brush by doing that because I can bring it back by a bit of hot water on the hair, no further than up to the hair, but it usually drops back itself. The synthetic brushes are quite robust and they will drop back. I don't think I've got enough dark on this side. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my other ingredient, which is bleach. Now bleach, if you're using bleach on a painting, you've got to be aware it's bleach. So it can affect your paper. If you're very careful, I've used it often and I've never noticed it affecting the paper, but I only use a little bit. And I know that this could be an issue. So adding bleach to the black quink ink brings out some fabulous golden colours and you'll just see it develop. I'll start to put it on. You won't see it immediately. But what you will see it starts to bleach out the colour and this is when I can get back that fabulous golden glow which is why I needed oops, a bit much there, a bit of the ink to be able to bleach back. I'm going to make a feature of this. There's a bit of light coming through here. And these three trees. Got light coming through. You can see it just starting to work. I'm using a, oh, a colour shaper of, of sorts, I think it's called a lift out tool, so it can be used to lift off um, watercolour. And I, I'm going to use this and a brush, 
I'm just using this because it's given me interesting marks. So I'm not getting constricted or overwhelmed by using a brush. I'm just getting new marks from this tool. Look at that. Starting to glow now. What it does do, it, you're not actually that easy to control how bright it gets. Once it touches it, it bleaches back. So you do have to be a little careful. And what I'll do is I'll try and see if I can bring back areas with ink. Not so easy. I think once the bleach is there, it's there. It doesn't disappear. It still continues to bleach the ink, but we'll have a look. Let's have a try. golden catches of on the branches this is where I can might drop to a brush so I'm using an inexpensive brush just in case I get any adverse effects to a good brush I don't want to lose a good brush this is a masking fluid brush synthetic hair and like I say it's not been a problem it's continued to look as good as it was, but I don't want to risk it. Can dilute with water, but you, it still bleaches. It's lifting off the ink. Not pump. Right, so over here, there was a nice tree which was just catching the light here. I'm going to come back to it because I might have been a bit too gentle with it. Okay. Just the top of a tree is catching. Just looking at how naturally the ink has fallen and see what areas I can pull out would benefit from a drop of the bleach. Again, be careful not to overdo it. But you can see that starting to glow. Now. Some looks a bit straight and pretty downy, so let's get a little bit of texture. You do have to be careful, like I say, if you go too far, it's not so easy to bring back. But I like here where you can just between these trees. You can see the light coming through. I think it's really starting to glow now. And it's just a bonus feature of the Quink Ink is this ability to just bleach back with this golden colour. Oops. 
bit of light catching on here. So what I'm doing is looking at light more than um, the subject, using the trees as reference. But the trees aren't exactly the same at all. You have to just be a little bit gentle with some of these. It's very easy to go in. Strong. And that's my weakness is I go in very strong, very quickly. Here's quite heavy. Let's try and get a very dry brush and see what textures I can get from. So, using the texture of the paper as well as the dry brush. Light is catching top of there. Oh, look at that. I love this. I just love the way it suddenly sparkles into life. I mean, it could catch, be catching there. <coughs> Maybe a bit more. So let's have a look. A bit of oops, too much there. So I might be able to take that back. So there's some areas which I've got a bit overexcited with. I'm going to use a synthetic brush again. Only reason is I just don't want the my good brushes to be contaminated with bleach. So let's just see what happens when I add ink back into bleach. I think it will just continue to bleach, but I might get some ability to, to cover. Have a quick look. Sit back. Right here needs a little bit of work. Only a little bit, I've pretty much done, and I could leave it as it is. So that's not done too badly, it has actually covered that very bright area. Wait to see how it dries to really get a full effect. They're a bit too strong, so I'm going to try. Now I know this won't lift very easily, but I'll see if I can take it back a little bit. Let's drop that back. And they're a bit too straight. So I need to what it what I'm looking at is that detracts from the rest of it. I've got two straight lines here. They don't make sense. So something as simple as a couple of marks. The bleach just suddenly breaks up that straightness and kind of <coughs> explains it a little bit more without taking them away. Just a little bit stronger here. A bit more. Again, this was quite straight. Oh, that's golden now. I'm just going to add a little bit more light at the bottom okay I 
think I'm going to leave it there. And actually, I'm quite pleased that you can cover with the black ink. So, using quink ink, you can see the fabulous golden colours that come out naturally when it's very wet. And then when you add bleach, you get a wonderful glow. Um, so that's my second uh, part of the challenge for Inktober. So join us later in the week on Thursday for a live workshop with Matthew Palmer and join me next week for another um, Inktober challenge. So join us then. <laughs>